the Kamudi watch. We did this last year, all year long. It was Kaminga and Moody. When are we going to see them on the court? When are they going to play? How, how are you going to bring them in? And the reason why I'm pulling this up is because I want to have a conversation about your thoughts and projections for both of these guys next year. Because if we go back to what I just said about Aaron Gordon, now the reason why Aaron Gordon can say, I just want to win, I want to, I want to fit in, I want to do my role, is because he was Kaminga and Moody. He was even a higher pick than both of these guys. I, I believe he was a number two pick in the draft. No, I think he was five. Was he five? Yeah, that was the Embiid, Wiggins, Jabari Parker, uh, Dante Exum. I think it was then Aaron Gordon. Then it was mm. Marcus Smart, Noah Vonley, Julius Randle. Somewhere, somewhere in that order. And so he's had his highs and lows. His highs, dunk contest. <laughs> And his lows just playing on some bad Orlando teams and not really getting over the hump. So now he's a vet and he still has great athleticism. Uh, I still think if I'm the other team, I make this dude shoot threes and and I kind of play a, 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 a five on four the other way. Well, did you well, see what he was doing to combat that? I didn't see in game one, but I saw during the Lakers series where I thought they had some success at yeah. giving him opportunities so at three. Kind of what they just like a really quick tidbit. What they did is, is so Miami was like, OK, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to put our worst defender on this guy and just give him the open three. So they put like Gabe Vincent. But then Aaron Gordon was like, OK, I'm just not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit. Well, but he's too line. big for Gabe. Exactly. Vincent. So he would just post. He would just instead of standing at the three point line, he'd crowd the space. He'd crowd the spacing and just sit in the paint. And just be like, I'm bigger than Gabe Vincent. Give me the ball. Like, and it was just that easy. So I don't know what, like, and even he was doing it with everyone, though. He was out muscling everyone. Yeah. He, they, you don't want to put Jimmy Butler on Aaron Gordon or else you can no, see that like, you lose. Get fouls too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That, no, that, I mean, it's, it's, see, this is, but this is what I'm talking about is when you have a game plan and the other team can go, okay, here's how we're going to attack your game plan. And then now it's up to Spo to go, okay, well, that's still a favorable matchup for us. Now, how do we combat what they were trying to do? So that's why I find this whole thing fascinating. But okay, so coming in Moody, I think Moody figured out what his role was in the in the playoffs this year. Kaminga obviously didn't or else maybe he would have played. And maybe that, you know, we're still uncertain about why Steve Kerr didn't play him outside of some of the general comments he's made about, you know, Kaminga's, you know, still only 20 years old or whatever. Like, sure, like that's an easy excuse. I want to know the basketball reason. I want to know the, you know, the X's and O's reason why Kaminga couldn't be in the Jamichael Green spot in the Lakers series. Uh, so I just, you know, just wanted to know your thoughts because you're big on these guys. And do do they does Kaminga figure it out like Moody did late in the season? Or does he still go with this mentality that, you know, you need to let me be free. Like I'm a, I'm a bird. I need to fly. And it's really kind of going to kill my next contract. If I don't get the minutes, like, I don't know if that's what his mentality is, but that's what that's my mentality. What his, that would be my what, mentality if I was him. And I'm sure that's what his agency and, and whoever's close to him is pushing like that. I feel like that's why maybe even that story from the Chronicle came out of like, <laughs> he's like maybe a little unhappy, but I mean, it's true. I, if I'm, if I'm, if I am a agent, I don't know if I want my guys going to golden state just because of, you know, they are not going to play and that is going to affect their next contract because, you know, it's not going to be as much money as if, you know, they had the opportunity to play. And, and especially with Kaminga, like the, the, like Slater keeps pushing it. Like he keeps saying, like, you know, I think that this guy has a potential to be an all-star. Like I could see him as an all-star yes. down the line. And I agree with him. He's he's a six, seven, two-way wing who can guard one through four, who has is experimenting with shot creation, who can he can he can dribble the ball. Like he he's might not be a break your defender down type of guy with the ball in his hands, but he can dribble in the G League Ignite. Again, I keep always pushing it, but he was the playmaker. And then he hit 37% of his threes this year, although that didn't seem to matter. But, you yeah. know, this is a guy who is 
you know, has all of the upside of an all-star. And to me, it's like you say, like, is, is Kaminga going to figure it out and do what Moody did? To me, I'm still with you. I'm waiting for what Kerr's explanation was because this guy <laughs> seems to have done what Moody did all year. Be the two-way guy. Be the energy guy. So I, I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I think that the thing that I think I'm worried about is that um, I just feel like, I feel like they're going to lose if they do do the, you know, bye bye Jordan Poole, bye bye young guys. Like, I'm just worried that they lose the trade and we'll see, ah, man. Yeah. OK, here, here's another thing. So not only are we wondering uh, our highest YouTube video from a views perspective in the history of the BSPN channel is our discussion several weeks ago about what happened and why everyone is so like and has the most comments so people warriors fans at least who somehow find our channel they're very interested in 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 what's going on and they have their own theories and they have you know some some thoughts about you know well you know Kaminga just does not play with these guys and in you know, we learned again through plus plus minus because they're so good at their jobs that part of the reason why Wiseman didn't fit is because his minutes with Steph were not good. And if you can't play with the best player on your team, then, you know, maybe you're not the right fit. And he wasn't, you know, we'll see if he's the right fit. So I don't think he's gonna be the right fit with the Detroit either, but I wonder, maybe we need to look into these Steph minutes with Kaminga as well. And maybe they found something there where it's like, well, Steph, Steph is playing 40 minutes a game in the playoffs uh and Kaminga has to be a positive with him in 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 some of those minutes and he's not so we're just not going we're going to play the math here and we got to keep Kaminga off the floor I wonder if it's something like that but uh you know well, uh, so, somebody who knows how to use those websites better than me will we'll have to figure that out for for me but uh but that's an interesting thing right because we know Steph is such a big driver in their decision making because he's their best player and he's their best not you know you could go back to 2017 2018 and it was him or kd and then some people instances people thought kd was was the warriors best player some people still thought steph was the kind of the engine but once kd left i think there was like a a thought like okay you know steph's still the best player but maybe he's not as good as he was and then he showed out the next two seasons like okay he is clearly head and shoulders the warriors best player no doubt and so that's how, I think that's how they view the team is he's the best player. And if you can't play with the best player, then maybe the, the minutes, you know, you're gonna have to find them a different. And maybe this is just like a unfortunate lesson that they're trying to teach this young guy, which I kind of hate that. But I get it from a coaching standpoint. Uh, but OK, so let's say we head into next season. And I imagine at the beginning of the season. It's going to be like, OK. Kaminga, you, you're you're going to get a shot. Moody, Moody, you know your role. You're going to play as long as you play defense and as long as you rebound. And then what if they go five and five to start the season again? Are we going to have to sit through this Kaminga inconsistent minutes because he's not a great fit because he's a bit of a tweener uh, for for next year? And then you and then it's like this is the third year in a row. I thought he's supposed to be one of these great. Like that's the thing that I don't want to see. And I, I'm hopeful that they find him a role where he can excel, but where he can also shine, which is the best of both worlds. I would play him next to Draymond and play him at the four and play Draymond at the five and see if Draymond could unlock him. Maybe it doesn't even have to be Steph minutes, but that's what I would love to see is, you know, Draymond being able to push this guy a little bit and help him with some of the tactical things that Draymond is instinctually so good at. Uh, but I'll let you go. I, I had a long preamble because I wanted to get all that stuff, but I know these are your guys. So what are your thoughts about next year with these guys? Um, you know, I just keep like wrestling with the idea that like they can't bring back the same team. Uh, you know, I think that I think that the Jordan Poole experiment like I, I trust in Jordan Poole to be a good player, and I, maybe he's a good player next year for the Warriors. But I, I think that Draymond Jordan Poole situation probably just has to go at some point. And I just think that if you're trading Jordan at his lowest in terms of value, 
like you've got to probably attach something with him that boosts the value that gets you a, a semi-decent return here um and and i don't know i just again just keep wrestling with the idea like they can't bring back the same squad and i think that you know, I, I think that we're 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 about to do the Bryce Fitz thing. Yeah, with, where I I give a draft pick, but like that that's all. This is, it's all going to be pointless if you know they choose the route of we need to not bring back the same team and we need to get a guy back. Let's say it's Siakam. Okay, Jordan Poole, Kaminga, and this first round pick, Siakam, come. Um, you know, like like there's a chance that 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 this whole segment is fun, but is pointless if they. But you know, if they do that, if we go back to our previous segment. Can Steph and Siakam be the twosome that you build around? That would be an interesting twosome, right? I think you would bet on it, right? Uh, two guys who can run the offense um, at an elite level. Obviously, Steph leaps and bounds above, but Siakam, you know, always a fringe third All NBA guy. So I, I'd, I, I'd buy it. I'd buy that. I, I think they should do that. I mean, that's what I pitched to them halfway through the season. I try to get Clay <laughs> off my team. See, they, um, they're you know, you need to figure out a way to reach Lake up, get get in the. Uh... Maybe you can be the video coordinator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think if the guys stay, though, like we're just in the same position as last season. But like I think I said at the beginning of last season, I said the goal of one of the goals of this season, along obviously winning a championship that didn't happen. But one of the goals of this season is so Kaminga and Moody become the guys. So you don't have to sign a DiVincenzo. So you don't have to sign a Jermichael Green. So you don't have to sign an Otto Porter Jr. So you don't have to sign a GP two, like those guys take those six and seventh spots in the rotation that are staple guys that you can trust in. Like that was the goal of season two for them. Mm -hmm. You know, with Moody, I think we're there. I don't think you need to sign. So I think with Moody, you are there with Kaminga. I would have said you are there up until April 2nd of 2023, you know, like just until whenever the, whenever the, uh, the first round started and he just like completely lost his rotation. But, you know, I, I would bet on the idea that these guys should have a consistent regular season rotation spot um you know as great as Kerr is I think that was his mistake was giving Anthony Lamb too many minutes um and and you know like is Anthony Lamb as as much as he was the coach's guy who who did everything Kerr wanted to do was he really a difference maker of 10 wins you know you couldn't just put Moody in and maybe take a winner or two less just to get him to that moment of of, of you could trust having him on the court um I don't know I think you know the 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 two timeline thing fun idea but uh you know front office invested uh and and picking those guys they put the development coaching staff around them but at the end of the day like Kerr has the say so of if they're going to play or not and he decided against it and i think that was kind of a killer of the two timeline plan and if that's still going to be the guy who's the coach and and obviously we want him to be the coach then i don't think you can keep drafting these guys if they're not going to be able to play on day 1 because they're just going to keep killing their value the agents aren't going to want them to go there it's bad for the team going forward because let's say they're the first pick next year and then you have a Victor Wembanyama and Victor Wembanyama is like i'm not playing for the warriors if they draft me because you know it's just uh, there's a lot of different scenarios that i feel like this can go no, down i think the warriors would figure out how to how to fit him in yes probably yes <laughs> but i just you know, I, I I can't give you a what I think these guys will be next season because I think this team's in flux in terms of, you know, you obviously need more help for Steph and you obviously need a secondary shot creator when he's off the floor. So that someone that can run the offense and, and you'd think it could be Jordan Poole, but then you have to factor in Jordan Poole and Draymond Green's relationship that this guy is just mentally checked out. Yeah. And he can't, you know, be on this team anymore with the, the guy who assaulted him still on it. So I just... I, you know, and until a move happens, then I think I'll be more confident on giving more outlook takes because, yeah, I just I just don't think that I think something's going to happen. <sighs> yeah, I just want to see I just want to see Kaminga go. You know what? I'm just going to come back and I'm going to be a monster. And then Kerr's just like, yeah, you know, you're still shooting 35 percent, but I just can't keep you on the bench like you're just yeah. doing too many good things.